Today is Thursday, November 15th, 2018. I'm Goz, that's George, that's Dan. Voice in your head, Danny Okers. It's MMA Junkie me. Radio, and it's our pre-show. The show that starts before the show. It leads into the show. It's the foundation of the show. And today we have a special show for you. Tell them, George. Our special show today includes Carlos Silva, Louis Smolka, who's making a return to the UFC, and James Vick. We're excited about it. James Vick just signed on to fight Paul Felder. Lewis Smoke is fighting some joker. And uh, Carlos Silva will be on to promote PFL2. Ah, I'm sure he's not a joker. I just don't remember who it was. It mm. sounded like a, a Russian name I think he's fighting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was, gonna, I was going to say. Do you know who Smoke is fighting? On our, uh, yeah, it's so hard to pronounce, dude. But what? And, what? It's, and it's like one Two name. Minutes. But what, is it, what background is it? I don't know. I don't think it's Russian, though. It is sh- 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 something like that. So you've heard on our end what we're going to do and the magic that we're going to produce. Danny, on your end on the production, what's going to be so magical about today that you had mentioned earlier? Um, I'm going to sit over here and, and try my best to not have heart attacks when No, George no, no. But remember you said like, oh, dude, watch today on my side. Watch me do this. What was that again? Uh, I don't remember that. I don't remember saying that at all. <laughs> when does Smoke a fight? <laughs> he fights in uh, Beijing, doesn't he? Shit. <laughs> Sorry. Can I say what's really distracting right now? Goes like I was literally about to send you this video that that, that Ray oh, wow. could have made it something up. up. Try and say that shit. Su- Sumudur- Sumudurajri. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. Sumu. Sumadarji, Sumadarji, Sumadarji is his name. Sounds everywhere like else it's maybe just one India name. or something. If I had to guess, yeah, yeah, he should have gone the Brazilian route, like Jacare, just Suma, Sumu, or something like that. Come on, dirty. Brazil. He's when from it comes China. In, when He's it comes from China, when it comes to names, Brazil just kind of even their soccer players. Hey, I'm Hulk. Everybody. Yeah. Like we can't do that in the NFL. <laughs> no. Try to be he hate me one time. That didn't work. That fight card's sneaking up on us. Overeem against Sergei Pavlovich. Danny. Pavlovich. Francis Ngannou versus Curtis Blades. I guess coming up. You talking Stand about by. that girl that crashed in the ice? Yeah, that is incredible. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> I like when girls get messed up. This is your captain speaking. We are making our descent into Las Vegas McCarran Airport. On behalf of our crew, we'd like to thank you for flying MMA Junkie Airlines. Now please fasten your seatbelts and put your tray tables in your upright position because the descent is going to be a little bit bumpy. <laughs> All right, Junkie Nation, it's time to roll, baby, on MMA Junkie Radio with gorgeous George and Ghost. This is what we do and why we do it, baby. All night long. We rollin'! Yes! The MMA Junkie Radio Revolution is upon us. Can you dig it? There's no escape. No escape. Through the vast frontier of cyberspace. And through a sea of stars in outer space. One small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. We've solidified our combat communication stranglehold. We are controlling transmission. With the use of MMA Junkie Radio and Sirius XM satellite radio technology. MMA Junkie Radio. Commence transmission. Live from MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world. Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Goes. From the fight capital of the world inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay race and sportsbook, you're listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show, the only show that matters. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly Goes, our ace co-host. To my left, it's the fight analyst, Dan Tom. Back east, producing, as he always does, Danny Otto. What's up, fellas? What up, much? Thursday, Morning. November 15th. Getting close to the weekend, getting close to some fights down in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Some fights tonight in Tel Aviv, Israel. The only problem is they're on tape delay. Um, you'll have to see them tomorrow. 
on Paramount and DAZN, but they will be happening tonight. And the reason I say that is because some of you like to punt like us. What does that mean? It means to bet. Uh, I've and if never you want that before. Yeah, if you're a punter, you're a better. Really? Yeah. And therefore, if you want to bet on Phil Davis versus Vadim Nemkov or Ryan Couture versus Halm Gozali or Patricio Frady versus Emmanuel Sanchez or the other side, whatever, you got to get those in pretty soon because Tel Aviv Israel is probably about a 10 – Hell, it may even be a a twelve hour difference. Shit, they may be fi- happening now. If you think about it, right? If, if it's a twelve hour difference, that means it's ten p.m. in Tel Aviv, Israel. That's about the time when fights are happening, hmm. or maybe even winding up. So we'll have to keep an eye on those results. Um, and and you know, we're in a pickle here. What do we do with spoilers? Well. We're also a radio show that's live for two hours, and news is news. So don't get mad if we say something. But, again, if you are wanting to play something, you better figure it out soon if the fights haven't gone because they do happen tonight for Bellator 209. All right, if it's Argentina, you got till Saturday. Don't sweat that one. That one won't be so bad. Yeah. Uh, Sanchez, by the way, and Frady are both – they're, they both made weight. So we do have a title fight. Frady's defending against Sanchez. Um, and that's always good to hear. You don't ever want to train for a world title fight and have the champion not make weight. You want to take it from him. And then if it's and the other way, you don't want to lose out on a title defense. Excuse me. Ed Soares made kind of a good point yesterday. Didn't he with Anderson Silva? I was mm-hmm. thinking about that. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? Technically... It wasn't a title fight, yeah. but he said something about under some new rules, and the new rules are, um, let's say Anderson made weight and Luter didn't, then I, I, I really still don't. still not a title fight. Yeah, I didn't understand what he was saying. No, there is a new rule. Sorry, there is a new rule. If Anderson didn't make weight but Luter did, I think Luter would He's be eligible, eligible yeah. yeah, to win. But but that didn't work out that way, so it doesn't it doesn't really. No, make sense. he wouldn't be eligible, would he? Yeah, he would. Wouldn't he? No, because what if the other guy just comes in at two hundred? I think that's had to do. Well, it, it's had to do when when a Hendrix belt is up for for grabs, but it's vacant. I think. I think so. Yeah, happens. Hendrix and Lawler had something, and that was for the vacant GSP. Hmm, threw me off there. I I don't know how to respond. Do you know, Dan, about the whole belt thing or whatever? I'm sorry, I'm getting tweets out. What are we talking about? The, the um, Yesterday what Ed Sawyer said about Anderson possibly uh, how he could have matched DJ's thing, but it was because of the Travis leader not making weight. It didn't count as a title. Defense. Yeah, if Frady didn't make weight, could Sanchez win the title? Uh, No, no, no. It doesn't, it do, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't count. It but if it was no. for vacant, yeah, it would, yeah, it then the one that makes weight can win the title and the other guy just can't. That's yeah. why it was such an awkward spot when Luter had him mounted at the end of the round because that, that, that I think they were even talking about in the commentary, you know, because that was a possibility of the mm-hmm. fight. And I would bring it up, though. Uh, Ed Soares does have a point, technically, if you want to, because the, the fact that, you know, one of the more popular guys we're talk, we, we can't talk enough about, Khabib Nurmagomedov, and his lightweight title run, a couple of those were catchweight fights. People don't bring that up, but they... they they will they will com- compare it, uh, talk about it, you know, and and try to, to, when we were talk, uh, comparing Tony Ferguson's light, lightweight run, uh, that's one of the main points I start off with. It was actual, you know, they're all lightweight fights. It does mean something. Yeah, um, I'll have to I'll have to research it. I, I thought I understood his point yesterday, and today uh, I I'm not sure that well, I do because it, let's take all that out. It can't be a title defense if both guys didn't make weight. Let's take all that out, though. Because I mean, his, his belt was never threatened. Had Luter won it, Anderson wouldn't have. Um, yeah. He he wouldn't have. Have have. But it's uh, not the fight. He wouldn't have fault. become the champion. Anderson still stays with the belt. He didn't fight differently because his belt wasn't on the yeah. line. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I I kind of hear where he's coming I'm from. I'm about to go that. back and listen to see how he phrased it again and see because I remember thinking, yeah, I remember the Luter fight. I was so caught up in remembering that it was Luter. And another thing, you, you want to know something funny? I think Luter was referred to the Michael Jordan of grappling or somebody said something off the wall. I think it was on the broadcast. And I'm not taking anything away. Obviously, he's got great Brazilian jiu-jitsu. But um, Luter mounted Anderson, like mm-hmm. Dan said. You know what? You know how Anderson got him off? Hmm. He just bucked him off and said, get off. Like, I, and, and I just remember I was like, whoa, that was pretty easy. You know, not that that's not a technique, but that's usually usually you fight to get to half guard and then 
figure out some sort of a sweep some or whatever. Guys just had but I like remember he just kind of like whoop. Some guys just had uh, kind of an easy run at that. Like Chuck Liddell, really all he used to do was just get up. Guys would take <laughs> him know. down, and he would just stand up. It was the weirdest thing. Yeah. Well, the point is, Frady made weight. Sanchez made weight. So you had a title fight there. And if the opportunity comes, um, then, yeah, it, it'll get mentioned, man. I mean, that that's just what we do here. Um some other news here. Sergio Pettis is a story on MMA Junkie. He just says, I can be myself. He's fighting at 135 pounds in his next fight. And even though we still haven't gotten anything official, um, well, all we're hearing is that the flyweight division will be gone pretty much by the end of the year. I think there's only three official matchups left. Maybe four because they rerouted Benavidez um, off the Borg fight. Mm -hmm. And by the way, speaking of Ray Borg, did you see he had a, I don't want to call it a setback because he had a setback in that he was told his baby had to go back under surgery, mm -hmm. except the surgery was already a success. So that kid's tough, man. Very that tough. kid is tough. I mean, he is an, he's a, a newborn still. Or, you know, I mean, he's a little infant. And how, that's his fifth surgery, my man. That, 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 that just breaks my heart to even think about that and what that family must be going through. Ray had stated he was going to release a statement regarding – why that fight was canceled and it won't be rescheduled because Benavides is, is fighting. I think it's Alejandro Perez, if I'm not mistaken. And he said, as I was about to do that, I got the news that I had to, uh, that our baby needed another surgery. And he goes, life or life is more important. Fighting just is minuscule, obviously, compared to that. But, but since then, the surgery has been a success and we all hope and pray that that's the last one and that that baby can, you know, continue to, uh, with with his life, uh, being a baby, a happy baby, and then a, a toddler and, and a, a boy, you know what I mean? So keep them in your thoughts and prayers because sure. they, they've been through a lot, man. Such a good guy, too, huh? He is, Ray? yeah. He came in studio with his wife. They were so cool. He's into archery. He's very, very um, humble, uh, quiet, even though he's a savage. Uh, inside the octagon, but really nice guy. Sean O'Malley, his suspension, six months, uh, eligible to return March 6th. I think I mentioned it yesterday. Usually USADA and NSAC. Yesterday was an NSAC meeting. They mirror each other. So if that's what they went with, then probably USADA will go with the same thing. And this guy will be eligible to return on March 6th. Now, the first thing I do is think, wait a minute, isn't there a UFC in March? But I think it's before then. I'm going to look it up here. If you go to the rumors tab, you can always see all the upcoming cards that are, um, well, I just answered. I just said it. All the cards that are upcoming in the sport of mixed martial arts involving the UFC, PFL, Bellator, Invicta, and a few other organizations. So I'm skipping ahead here, and yeah, it's March 2nd. So he wouldn't be able to fight in Vegas, unfortunately. Seems he really likes fighting in Vegas, but if he can't come back to March 6th, then that's it. Uh... A few other guys like Danis Tukagov and Nurmagomedov, not not Nur, not 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 Habib. Uh, they got some suspensions extended for their participation in the post UFC 229 melee. Cody McKenzie suspended for four years for submitting a urine substitute. He did not show up to the uh, NSAC meeting yesterday. Therefore, there was no defense. And he got the maximum, man, four years. That that might pretty much end his career right there. I know that he used to be a fisherman up in Alaska, and apparently he made some good money. So I don't know if that's what's, what he'll return to or if he will find another uh, another sport in combat sports to compete in because obviously he has that decorated guillotine and a, a decent ground game, and I don't know if he can and, and would or, or how it would work. But you know, combat sports is worldwide, and I don't know that the NSAC can – can uh, suspend you, you know, everywhere. I know that they'll have some jurisdiction, but yeah, I think he's gonna find a way to fight. I, I think Cody's not the type that I think is has aspirations of becoming a champion or anything like that. I think he just wants to make money, and he'll fight pretty much anyone, any anywhere. So I, I would see him just getting picked up on cards where commissions just aren't involved. Dana White out in Australia. I guess he met up with Israel Adesanya. Uh, they're both all smiles in the picture there. So maybe Izzy got a new contract, or maybe he just got a nice pat on the back. Hey, you're you're one of our guys going forward. Who knows? But that guy's been doing well for himself. A lot of people say he's 
uh, not a hybrid, but he resembles a little bit of John Jones at times. He remembers a little bit of Anderson Silva, and that can never be a bad thing when the, when you have those comparisons. You got to pay attention to that guy because, yeah, he's had pretty decent showings in the cage, but it was a mixture of his personality and even things like having Joe Rogan like you and going on his podcast. Yeah. All that stuff comes together, and that's what kind of gives you that little boost. Sometimes where you get those fighters that don't really want to say anything, they don't want to talk smack, they don't want to, they don't want to come on shows, they don't want to do this, they don't want to do that. That's fine. But look at this guy, and look what he's been able to do. A year ago, we were all kind of like, oh, okay, this guy might be interesting, and now look where he's at. Mm-hmm. It's all that. It's that whole combination of everything coming together that's put him in this situation. Yeah, I agree, man. Uh, a lot of it has been through his own hustle or his team's hustle. A lot of it has just been on his own. But, yeah, when we met him, he came across to me as a good guy. Like, um, even though he wasn't as famous as he is now, and it was only less than a year ago, a little less than a year ago, he still came off as a pretty humble dude. Likeable. Christos Giagos versus Mizuto Hirota has been added to UFC Fight Night 142 in Australia. Um, That's a, a recent fight booking. And then... The Ultimate Fighter 28, which self-admittedly, I just fell off. There's a episode 10 recap there. Uh, every episode that's ever been aired, we recap it. And uh, it's there if, you, if you've if you been following, if you want to check it out. Or, or just maybe sometimes at night everybody catches the whole episode. And we kind of do a great job of summarizing it. So I'm just giving the, the writers some love. But have you noticed, guys, there is no tough talk anymore? Dude, they're, they're checking out. It's not – I've seen a lot of these episodes. I'm still a little bit behind. It's not so much the fighters in the house, the fight. It's kind of the coaches are just a little dry, man. I can't get into it. Uh, but I, I still haven't caught up fully, so I'm definitely going to do that because there are some personalities there that I think are worth yeah. watching. But uh, it, it, for me, it's been more the coaches have just been a little dry. Lewis Smoka, story there on uh, by Mike Bond about uh – his chance to revive his UFC career. He'll be a guest of ours coming up shortly. Uh, Violent Bob Ross, that's Luis Pena. He's dropping the featherweight. Remember, he lost to uh, Trezano. And he really didn't have many moments when he looked good. Um, I was trying to convince myself because I had included him in a parlay. Oh, here we go, here we go. Use your length, you know. But he just never really got going. He was so confident on the show. And everyone talked him up so much at AKA that I really I fell for that one, or maybe I just didn't give enough respect to Trezano, who also had a good show yeah. for himself. But Trezano was, I mean, he was kicking that inside leg and exchanging with him, and he looked great. And now he sends this guy packing the featherweight, and I could have sworn Bob Ross, or sorry, uh, Luis Pena is about six three. That's a tall featherweight, man. Luis Pena, I think, got it in his own head because he was showing his frustration during the fight. Yeah. And I, I just think he got – he started overthinking things, I think. Because I think he's pretty talented. I think he's going to be good. I don't know that he had to flip his world upside down like this. Yeah. Connery Gracie is entering uh, Bellator 209 with a lot more confidence. That is Hoist Gracie's son. If you want to connect the dots, he'll be fighting on that fight card. And, again, I want to give some constant reminders. We may or may not talk about Bellator 209 because the fights, I believe, are happening uh as this show's taking place tomorrow night, you get to see it on the zone and paramount at their normal time, but it will be a one day delay. But if you want results now, then, uh, you may hear them. You may not, I don't know. Or, but, or they may even pop up on the internet. So if you really just don't like them, it's not just us that can possibly spoil them as a lot of other spots. And if you want to gamble, then with the time change right about now, it might be around the time you, you would have wanted to get in. Because uh, they're in Tel Aviv, Israel, and i got to believe that's 10 to 12 hours uh, in advance. I know that the U.K. is 8, and then as you get to Western Europe, it's 9. And that's good for about, what, France, maybe Spain or the Netherlands, Howie D, his neck of the woods, Austria. And then you cross over into Eastern Europe. And I think, like, I remember Moscow for the Olympics, I think they were 10. And I don't know where Moscow lines up with Tel Aviv, Israel, but it's going to be either a little bit further to the east from us or ride around the same. Well, fuck, I'll just look it up. Or you could take advantage of your dumb friends that just happen to come over for some pizza. You just go, hey, man, I got a feeling this guy's going to knock him out. Maybe bet Chipotle, something like that. 
You don't want to take your friends for all's, money. All's fair, man. But a beer, something like that, work that angle. Yeah, Tel Aviv is real time. Let's see here. Right now, it's 8.17, so it's 10 hours. And I would say that anywhere in the world, if you're having a fight card, by 8.17 p.m., fights are taking place. But you may still be able to sneak a few in. Are you guys trying to do, do the math on what time it starts for U.S. time? No, I'm trying to do the math uh, in terms of has that fight card started yet. And I think they have because it's 8.17 in Tel Aviv. Israel. You mean the main card, right? The main card. for sure there's fights going so on. Yeah, I imagine in Tel Aviv Israel the fight started at 7. And we can't so. even watch it live on Dazzin, the da even the Dazzin's uh, tape delay? That's unfortunate, huh? You would think that they would have you covered. And yeah. Paramount would do the, ti the time delay. Sorry, the tape delay. Uh, Yancey Medeiros is returning to lightweight, and his quote is, to be a beast. Well, he's already a beast, but yeah, okay. If he can make it safely, pff, he's fun to watch, man. Mm -hmm. You can't take anything away from Alex Oliveira, Yancey Medeiros. There's just a couple cats that, even though they're not at the top of the rankings, they don't suck, and they're definitely exciting fighters. Uh, he's right up there, man. The last thing I wanted to say was Paul Felder was on our show recently, and he said he weighed in when he was out in New York, and I think it's the scale said 193. He posted it, but then came on our show and said, hey, look, a few meals had been had, some travel had been had, and I was right back in the 80s, so don't, don't, uh, that wasn't a true, true mark of where he's at. Because remember, this guy's fighting, at, he just signed on to fight at 55. Mm -hmm. um, in California. Yeah, and in California. <laughs> and so they're keeping an eye. And so he was quick to clarify that. So if you see a story there, that comes from our uh, our show. And it got a lot of, lot of um, traffic, 4,800 4, uh, shares. So usually when it's being shared a lot, you know that the traffic's pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. Since our first guest is coming up at 1040, let's get one of the breaks out of the way. Uh, that means we're 20 minutes away from our first guest. It'll be Louis Smoka. Uh, so let's do that. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM's Fight Nation Channel 83. Stay close and we'll be right back.
Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Goes. Week one in fantasy football starts tonight, and Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win. Our experts analyze tonight's Packers Seahawks game and all of this week's matchups from the fantasy football experts' uh, perspective or for any other interest you may have in the game. Grow all your sports investments on Fantasy Sports Radio, Series 210, XM87, streaming on your phone or at home on connected devices and speakers. Good. The water? Yeah. Yeah, it tasted Tasty. really good. You look like Jules and uh, Pulp Fiction taking a drink of that. <laughs> what was it? Tasty the Sprite. Shake? Oh, was it Sprite? It was Sprite, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am trying. I'm just going to be full, <laughs> fully uh, open about all this. I'm actually now trying to get results for Bellator. Mm-hmm. And I can't find them. Nothing even on Twitter? It. Nothing on Twitter. Combat nope. Press states that they have full results, but they don't have not not even one fight. You can tell me that Jackie Gosh and Jamil Ibrahimov, that result hasn't already registered? So maybe it's a good thing. I don't know. Maybe I should stop looking for these. But, like, when I was more frequent on the underground, there was always someone from some part in the world that goes, I'll be there. I'll be updating a post. And I haven't found no one. You tell me no one's in Tel Aviv, Israel for Bellator 209 that has a connection to us? Six degrees of separation. Was that Kevin Bacon? Seven degrees or six degrees? Seven. Seven. There's nothing. Do you know who that was in uh, in mixed martial arts? Who, what? who, like, a good guy to do that is? Do you guys have one? I It'd have, have to be have someone like an Eve Edwards because he's fought. He fought for a long time, mm-hmm. and he had, I think he had a Bellator run, a UFC one and two run. He fought like in Costa Rica for um, uh, Bodog. He fought. You see what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I think you have to touch on a bunch of organizations, have longevity, and then also fought like different levels of of uh, fights. I think he was Elite XC as well. BJ Penn's a good one. Uh, Rio Chonin was a good one, or not Rio? Ch- sorry, Minimal Minimal Minowa Man. Uh huh. Um, you you want to get guys who have fought in a lot of different divisions, because mm. then it's easy to bridge gaps. But Penn though, he only had twenty six v- fights, didn't Vitor he? Vitor Belfort was another one. And Penn, yeah, but he lot. fought. He fought like uh, he fought Leoto, didn't he? Oh, so, I you know, see what like you're now saying. Now you can bridge. He the covered two a five. lot. Of, okay. Mm-hmm. Um. Yuri Alcantara for a lower weight class. As Yuri Alcantara has got guys who peered up, has have appeared in the 170 weight class in the UFC within the last five years, and all the way down to like flyweights. I think. Does he have a lot of fights? Yuri Alcantara. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do you guys want to play that game? I'll give you a name, okay. and you guys bridge them all the way to the other name. Sure. And then how many degrees do we get? Seven. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. slam dunk. Yuri Alcantara and bridge him to uh, Vitor Belfort. All right. Give me a second here. I think Marcel may have come through with Belfort. Are you allowed to look? Hmm? Yeah, oh, yeah. I got to do it. Yeah, you can look. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's Yuri not. Alcantara. And you want him to reach who? He's got to reach Vitor Belfort in seven moves. Okay. So I'm looking at Yuri right now. Okay. Well, this was your boy, Dan. Do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? Uh, You can go. Okay. I'm looking at Yuri Alcantara right now. And the first link I would do is I'm going to go with Ricardo Lamas because that gets me. Oh, no, Francisco mm. Trinaldo. That gets me to 55. He's now got I'm going to look at Francisco Trinaldo. So he's got a bunch of people on his list. And I'm going to go to. So that's one move, right? That's one move. Let me write that down. You went to Trinaldo. Yeah. Trinaldo doesn't. He fucks around too I much I think you know where you fucked up. Well, hold on. I'm, I'm not done. Yeah. Guy. Well, here we go. Medeiros. Medeiros has dabbled in welterweight. Okay. And I also have the option of Felder, but I'm going to go with Medeiros. I think he's had more fights. And remember, he was a heavy kid, too, so if I get any of those. Then. So now after Madero, I'm going to go to um, – oh, boy. I may have picked the wrong guy. I'm going to go to Eric Silva, I think. Ah. No? Not this guy, no. Well, don't help me out. Oh, well, I mean, it's not. I, I'm not like All trying right. to root against you. Yeah, I'm to help yeah, you. you're right. You're right. That, that that's a good one. Okay, so now I'm at Cerrone. That's three, three degrees. Who do I get to get to? Vitor. Yeah, get to Vitor. I, I know I'm gonna do it. Okay, so now after Cerrone, he's fought Lawler, and Lawler's dabbled at middleweight. So here we go. All right. 
That's their fourth move. That's my fourth. I, I and Lawler has fought. Um. You don't want help, right? No. Okay. Lawler has fought. I'm gonna go to Matt Linlin, and I think Linlin fought Vitor. Yeah. yeah, he got iced by him. Yeah. How many moves was that? Did I cut it close? Okay, so you got to Lin. So you did it in five moves. I did it in four. Did you? But I, I did. Uh, if you, uh, you, uh, you didn't use my hint. I said welterweight. He's fought welterweights who fought in the UFC. Who was the welterweight? Viscardi Andrade. Well, and Viscardi Andrade fought Bristol Morunde. And Bristol Morunde fought Ronaldo Souza. Uh, Ronaldo and Souza fought. Belt 4-4. Four, four. Oh, you did fight Belt 4. Yeah, no shit. Good job. Okay. Well, there you go. This was initially. Do you remember? I think, I think what you want to do, though, is stump someone with a flyweight. Well, what and then send them to a heavyweight. Send it, oh, yeah. yeah. Did tough. Me a favor. That's tough. How we yeah. were going to do That's this tough. was, um, do you remember when we did insert coins? We were going to match two people and just kind of like, uh, what is it, family feud? And then just give them, two, give them a fighter and just let them go and see how fast, who can get there the quickest. That's how we were going to do this at a junkie gathering mm -hmm. one time. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Give me another one. Uh... All right, let's while, while, let's while do I click Marcel from Houston's why don't you, link. Why don't you go, can you get from Uriah Faber to Brock Lesnar? Oh, easy. All right, Uriah Faber to Brock Lesnar. I get seven moves. Mm -hmm. I did it in five and Dan did it in four for the other one? Yeah. All right, let's see here. Faber dabbled. Did you do Faber to Lesnar, you said? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. All right, Faber. Let me go earlier in the career. Earlier. Although he did fight Edgar, and Edgar fought a lot at 55, so that might be my go right there. Um, I, I just did it in six if you want to cheat and use my scale. Six? Oh, look at this one. I love that one. All okay. he do is attach two Charles to my scale. Charles Bennett. <laughs> All right. Charles <laughs> Bennett to Vanderlei. There we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like right, that. Charles I like that. Charles Bennett to... Uh, <laughs> I got to move up and wait here. Mm. Uh oh, that that that's not working out for me, is it? Holy shit! I'm gonna try Bang Ludwig, because I know that at All least right. gets me to a solid welter. All right, that's, that's two, two moves. You did in six, Dan? Yeah. So we'll go from um, the coach all the way to. The following. Uh, yeah, the following. Oh, BJ Penn. Boom. Right. Uh -oh. BJ Penn's going to get me up there. <laughs> yeah, he is. To Lie Odo Machida. All right. couple pass now there from him. How many moves is that? That's your fourth move. I mean, it's pretty obvious here at this point, right? What, Dan, what you did, gotta do? Dan did it in six, so I have to. This is my fourth move? No, that was your fourth. You went Crazy Horse to Ludwig to Penn to Machida. Oh, so all I can do is I tie think you only in. have one, one, one move. Yours is more creative, so I'll give you points. Uh, Mine's not creative if you just do Couture, the math for my last Lesner. one. Yeah. Okay. How did you do yours, Dan? Do Easy. You you just do Faber to Alcantara, repeat the steps so you go get to Belfour. Now you go Belfour to Couture and Couture to Lesnar. Okay. All right. So I cheated. I I just use the same same format, so I can't yeah, I can't, I can't bump my chest. Uh, yeah, I think we have to, to, to do the last break. But you know what? Let me click this link just real quick. How stupid are we? Tapology more than likely is the one that will be able to help us out. All right. I, it looks <laughs> like I might have some results. Hold on. I'm going to look at this. I don't care about spoilers. Um, and I guess you guys have no choice because you're here with me. But let's see here. Yeah, they are posting them here. And what, where they All at? the way to that Conry Gracie guy. Mm -hmm. Well, he's Gracie's son. He won. Uh, I think you're okay with knowing that, right? Fuck. Uh, <laughs> and then... We progress here. It looks like they're they're not at the main card yet. So I still don't see a result for Baby Fedor. He's on the card. Sandy Dandwa and so on. Thank you, Marcel from Houston. And I can't believe Topology. Yeah, how did we not think of them? We're idiots. Okay, let's take a break. It's MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation Channel 93. Stay close, and we'll be right back with Lewis Smoker.
charm, compassion, common sense. These guys have none of that. You listen to them, so you're no better. I am awesome, though. They are gorgeous, George and Goes. Thousands of people affected by California wildfires urgently need support, help the American Red Cross meet emergency needs, and provide shelter to these families. Donate today to California wildfires by going to redcross.org or calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. All right. I want to give a couple shout-outs. This will just take me, like, 10 seconds. Shout out to Roly Estrada, Kate Martin Stabilo, uh, DJ Quest 562, Juan Ramirez, and I'll get to some more uh, in just a bit. Let's get to our first guest of the day, Luis Smoka. He's back in the UFC, folks. He'll be fighting Sumadajari, Sumadajari. That's his first name and his last name. He's a Chinese fighter who's 8-1. And, and Smoka, sneaky little bastard, man. He went out and won three fights ever since parting ways with the UFC. So that's why he's back in the game, man. He's gone 3-0 so far in 2018. He's looking to possibly go 4-0. What's up, Lewis? Good job, man, with the, with the three wins in 2018. Thanks, Lewis. Thanks for having me back on. You didn't really make, make much noise about these either. I, I get, you know, you took your cut uh, like a man, and you went out there. You know, this was late 2017, and then, boom, you went to work in April, June, October, so you spaced them out. Uh, all finishes, very impressive, and and you got the attention of the of the matchmaker, man. Really, really, congrats to you. Uh, not many fighters would be able to bounce back like that so quickly. Um, yeah, thanks, man. You know, I just I went to work. You know, I moved out of here, trained as Colin, and you know they just they put me to work. They wanted to they just put my head nose to the grindstone, and I just I I did it. You know, I did the work. What was the so hardest? I hope that I did my best, man. What was the hardest part about fighting for the UFC and then no longer fighting for the UFC? Was it just because does it go back to, hey, kind of like an ego thing or, or the money? Or, or can you point to anything in particular? Um, honestly, like the money is a big thing. And like the goal is to fight for the UFC, you know, and it's like. We all do this, like, um, well, for me, part of it was, like, supporting my daughter, you know, like, I need to make sure she's taken care of, like, financially for her future, you know, I'm trying to provide a life for her, mm -hmm. and just fighting for, just to barely break even or even lose money on local shows, that's pretty disheartening, you know, like, you don't really want to see that in your bank account, you're like, man, I need, like, I need a college fund for this girl, I need to get her, like, health insurance and stuff and I'm over here losing money doing this stuff you know and it's just it, it's kind of it's kind of like emotionally like it messes with you you know you you, it, it, you feel like you're going backwards a little bit you know you're like oh man I hope this pays off you know were you close to um just looking for a full-time job and if so what what would you be doing if you weren't fighting um, yeah, dude, I was definitely looking into that. I was thinking of being, like, a firefighter or, like, a cop or something. Like, I don't know, man. Public service job because, you know, they have good benefits and whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I, I was pretty close to that at one point. But uh, my fiance Yumi, wasn't really having it. She was like, no, you're not going to you're not gonna like it. I know you. It's, you're just full of shit right now. So. Mm. Well, that's great that you had her support. And does – your daughter yeah. live with you in California or back in Hawaii? Um, she's here right now. She's asleep oh. in the room, though. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, that's awesome, man. All this is sounding good to me. You got this fight coming up in China um, versus – I don't know if you can beat me at, at this to pronounce his name, but it looks like Sumudajari. 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 Tell me about that guy, man. I'm, I'm coming yeah. clean here. I don't know much other than he seems to have an impressive record. He's Chinese, uh, and you're fighting in China, so therefore advantage to him in, term, in terms of travel and all that. But what have you been able to dig up on him? Uh, not too much, man. I found one video of his first fight of him just beating the crap out of some dude for like two minutes. And then I have like a flag knee knockout. So, like, I can't – I haven't really found too much of him, you know. Yeah. All right. Uh, Louis Smoka, our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio. He'll be fighting here in about, what, whew, uh, two weeks, man. This thing's creeping on. Less than that, nine days. So you're going to be taking off pretty soon, right, to, to Beijing, China? 
I leave tomorrow, dude. <laughs> yeah, so we just caught you. All right, thank you. Thank yeah, you very much for fitting us in. Yeah, it's on, like, the complete other side of the world and stuff, you know? So I got to go out there early, get adjusted to, like, the time zone change and all that. Right. Okay. Let me turn it over to the guys here. Goes, what do you have for Lewis Smoka? Lewis, as far as the fights outside of the UFC, these last three, what would you say is the biggest lesson that you learned inside of the fights? Um... Just don't take anything for granted, man. Just try to go out there and win every single time. Um, inside the actual fights, you know, um, I've just I've been working hard, game planning, trying to study my opponents, you know, um, trying to be confident, trying not to second guess myself, and just you know, like just just grinding, dude. Just working hard. Man. I know that you uh, you had mentioned before on our show that you you cut the drinking out and you feel great about that. Is that something that you've kind of fallen into like a groove now and you've just gotten used to it, or is it kind of still a, a daily struggle for you? Um, good days and bad days. Like there's some days where I just I don't even care like at all. Especially like Saturday and Sunday mornings when I wake up and I'm not hungover at all. I'm like, oh, this is nice. Like, I don't know why I didn't do this years ago. Like, this is great. But I don't know. Every now and then, you know, you're hanging out with your friends. You go out to a bar or whatever. You kind of want to drink a little bit. But, you know, I just, I, I, I know that's not for me, you know. How long has it been since you've been dry? January. So okay. almost a year. Congratulations, man. All right. Let's turn it over to Dan Thank Tom, you, our yeah. fight analyst. Dan, what do you have for Lewis Smoka? Hey, Lewis. You know, I was tracking your fights outside the UFC and, and seeing that, you know, you were still competing at flyweight for the most part. Um, this fight's at bantamweight, and your opponent, from what from the looks of it, looks like he's used to competing at flyweight, too. Uh, have you been already kind of... Uh, feeling some of the benefits of moving up to 135 and, and I take it that this is going to be a, a permanent move what's your I guess what's your outlook on that as far as uh, repositioning your body if assuming you're doing that um well I want to see how this fight goes but I'm pretty sure if I get this win I'm going to be moving up to 35 um as far as like I'm probably going to have to put on at least 5 to 10 pounds of like core muscle like pretty quickly uh, so, you know, I got my dude Corey Beasley helping me out with that fight camp conditioning. Um, for this fight, we can't really do anything just because of how short notice it is. I mean, I was working already, but all he said, all we can really do is burn out your cardio right now. So that's all we've been doing. But, you know, as soon as we get back, I'm going to work on putting on some muscle, you know. I feel like I can do it. Um, I'm pretty much, like, to keep my weight down. To, to be able to compete at flyweight, I pretty much intermittent fast like the entire the entire time. I'm like not in training camp just to keep my weight low. So you know, I feel like I can put on a solid amount of weight, especially with lifting. But um, you know, as far as benefits, I'm just I'm happy to not have to cut all that weight. You know, for this fight, I'm doing maybe 15 pounds. You know, normally I'm doing around 25. So it's it's a really big difference for me. And, you know, I'm hoping to just not be super depleted. I'll still have muscle on my frame. I'm not stripped down to, like, the bare minimum, you know what I mean? So I'm just, I'm hoping to be faster, quicker, more explosive, you know, have better reactions. Got Gotcha, gotcha. And just kind of staying with the uh, Bantamweight uh, and moving on from the flyweight theme, obviously, you know, uh, you're, you know, grateful to be back and whatnot but obviously I, I i i would argue this could be maybe a healthier move for someone like yourself I mean, you're five nine you know for for crying out loud uh i gotta imagine though those cuts were rough but for for other guys that maybe were you know more well placed or well suited for the division i guess do you have any opinion as far as uh the futures for, uh, as far as that goes you know uh other flyweights whether you know friends former former opponents of yours do you have any kind of outlook on that because i think this this is all kind of taking everybody by storm you know what i'm saying as far as adjusting yeah no i think it's kind of like yeah, i think it's catching a lot of people by surprise i mean for some of the shorter dudes that are um, like i don't know like five four or so i mean 25 is probably like where they have to be for their frame but i mean i i guess you know, go to Japan or go to go to one, go to Singapore and uh, try to get paid. That's yeah. what I'd do. Yeah. Um, Lewis, is there going to be a big old Thanksgiving waiting for you when you come back? Because I, I, I realize here you're going to um, miss out. 
Yeah, uh, I don't know. We'll see, man. It's supposed to be like a Friendsgiving and stuff. My parents might come over. Uh, I'm not sure, man. I'm just, I, I, I'm focused on the fight right now, but I'm hoping to eat some good food after. My mom makes some bomb rolls. Oh, yeah? Uh, what, 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 what goes Yeah, it? dude, just the bread. Oh, just the bread, okay. Like, she makes it from scratch. Yeah, it's like, it's just bread, and she makes it from scratch. Like, needs the dough, like, puts the yeast in it, everything, and, it, like, it's so good. Like, we, I, we could sell those. Like, I feel like people would buy it, and it's just bread. I Crazy. can dig it, man, because for Thanksgiving, that those are our rolls, as we have Hawaiian rolls. But uh, it, it sounds like that's kind of what you're describing, except from scratch. Yeah, pretty much. All right. All right, man. Well, listen, we're really, really ecstatic for you. Congratulations on going almost a year with not having had a drink. Uh, the 2008, you've gone 3-0 with three finishes. That's awesome. Uh, having you back in the UFC, that's awesome. And it sounds like you're in a good frame of mind and, and you are you have a reason to fight, you know, not just for yourself now, your little daughter. And you sound very responsible talking about, you know, all, already forecasting, you know, those college years. So that, that's great, man. That's great to see you all, you know, growing up and maturing. And uh, we're really stoked for you. Yeah. It, it's just, you know, it's a reality check getting cut from the UFC. I'm, I'm trying to do everything right. You know, I'm trying hard. Yeah. I hear you, brother. All right. Whatever's left of camp, I hope you get through it, you know, with no injuries, and I hope you have a safe safe uh, voyage to Beijing, China, and good luck on November 24th. We'll definitely be tuning in. Thank you, guys. Thank you for, thank you for everything. All right. Take care. We'll see you, buddy. That is Louis Smoka, folks. He'll be fighting at UFC Fight Night 141, Blades versus Engano 2. That's on November 24th. Um, that is actually a UFC Fight Pass show that starts at 3 a.m. Eastern. So let me set the table for what that really sounds like. The 24th is a Saturday. That means us West Coasters, we got to wake up at midnight on that Saturday to watch the first fight, which is our guy here, Louis Smoka versus Sumujari. Sumujari. What the fuck did he say? Sumujari. No, Su- Sumu, Sumu Dujari, Sumu Dujari, that dude. Sumu 2, Sumu Square. Sumajari. Yeah. You have to wake up right at midnight. As Friday's ending and Saturday's starting, that's us to catch that first fight. On the East Coast, easy. Saturday, 3 a.m., wake up. Uh, and the main card, if you're just a snob and don't want to watch the prelims, then uh, you need to start at 6.30 a.m. Eastern, 3.30 a.m. Pacific. So it's going to be a, a pretty cool weekend, you know, with all the football and, and uh, food and all that, and then some fights. Hey, this is game? this is the toughest one for me. I've done this one before, and it's so hard to stay up. Versus the whole card? Like, yeah, like versus too, yeah. Uh, Pride, where remember Pride would start like about 11.30, midnight. I could roll through that that way. But this one, you usually start to get like a little bit of a nap or something, and then you wake up and you do it. It was so tough. Man. I did. I did Shanghai uh, last year. I, I, I was. I like doing it because I was such a nerd. Like I was like, uh, even like I was even able to get the nods because I'm, I'm familiar with like Chinese culture and music, and uh, even like to what these guys were walking out to. I was nerding out on. But I don't blame anybody for not. The dangerous part about these ones and trying to stay up for them is they usually put these cards right in the middle of these crazy UFC stretches, and right now we're in the biggest one they do all year. They all save that big one for the end of the year, so that, that, that card kind of gets swallowed a lot of times. For you. The killer for me on these is when they don't, uh, when there's too much space in between fights. Yeah. Then that's when you, you're just... I you're can go to bed at 10. Or something, right? Well, no, that's 8 Eastern. Yeah. You're right, man. That's a tough one. Well, shit, it's the same thing you just talked about. Midnight. It's like Pride. Except the first fight mm. isn't fucking Hua versus Rampage. You're right. Yeah. We got we to gotta slowly warm up. We like Smoko. He's been in our studio, so we'll be vested. I like but Kevin Holland. if you do Holland. main card, if you do main card, yeah. that, that's tough. I like Kevin Holland, but then yeah. after Smoko and Holland, I don't know much about the other guys. I'm hanging in there. Uh, I remember Jessica Aguilar back in the day, and then we get to Rashad Coulter, and, and, and you know, but yeah, it's a struggle, man, with some of these fights to get to uh, you know the, the main card. But there you have it, folks. That's Luis Smoko, one of uh, three guests today. James Vick, Carlos Silva joining us in the second hour. Um, the says what in January it'll be one whole year no drinking. Mm-hmm. But can can he's you told like us before he stopped drinking, so he must have went on and off, on and off. This one sounds like it's been 
straight dry since since January. Can you tell a difference in him though? Well, I can, and th- it's not to say that like before I don't, we do our I've show, never he's in here like messed up. Yeah, I've never heard an interview. He just seems more focused. Focused, yeah, but he still seemed like he just woke up or just kind of starting out his morning. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't hear a pep in his voice, I guess. Um, but you know, you could tell. I think the little baby was in the background, maybe more responsible. So yeah, maybe it's just he's juggling. He's juggling things and getting through life, man. All right, Smoka can be followed on Twitter at Last Samurai UFC. I'll still never forget the first time I saw Lewis Smoka. What stood out to me, in fact, I'll just look at the fight right here. Where was it? Shit, I closed the window. No, I'm curious here. This is. He's it got some is. underrated gems, by the way. When we're talking about flyweight fights or finishes, even. Yeah, it was. He had 10 fights, if I'm not mistaken. He won one, lost one, won one, won four, and lost four. You know, if he had kind of just juggled those, like win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, he wouldn't have gotten cut. It was the four in a row that did it. Uh, and look at the beast he faced. Marino, mm-hmm. Borg, Elliot, Nicolau. All ranked fighters. Maybe Elliot isn't, but the rest all ranked. Which is ironic. Elliot's the only one to challenge for it. Well, yeah. uh, aside from Borg, he gave, challenge for he a gave title. Demetrius a, a good fight. Yeah. All right. So when he beat that uh, Alp, Oskilik, if I'm not mistaken, that was the one. What I really liked about him in that fight, or maybe it was Richie Vakulik, I don't know. He, when he stood there, Dan, he had great presence in the pocket. He used head movement to dodge a lot of the punches that were coming at him, and he was just open to counter. You know what I mean? And there's so many fighters that when they are striking, especially with four-ounce gloves, they'll tend to retreat or use footwork. But basically, you're getting out of the zone. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But I'm just saying there's some that can do that and still also just pivot within the pocket, you know, the phone booth fight type of fight, and still just have some opening. It's risky with four-ounce yeah. gloves, but I remember he was able to do it. I was really, really impressed with him. Uh, it jumped out at me. That, um, was that the fight that we finished with the sidekick too, right? Or was that Al Tapic Oskalich? That part I don't remember. I just remember was, what was that, 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 that stood I'm, out I'm, to me. I know one of them. He uh, he, he might have caught him, but he got. I think he caught both guys with it, but only got to finish with one. And uh, I, I, so I, something I never asked Louis Smoko about is his Kempo Karate background. I don't I don't know if it was like something he did as a kid, but you'll see flashes of it sometimes. And I like that fight, Richie Valio, the uh, Australian surfer, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Yeah. All right. Uh, we don't have enough time for the daily debate. We'll save that for the beginning of the second hour. Okay. Plus, I think I wanted – I know what happened was I had opened the window, but the uh, voting was still open. So we'll get to it when we come back. Uh, still have some time. Hmm. What's that? Uh, it surprised me. I'm on the wrong side. Really You bad. didn't pick that fight? I didn't. Wow, Ghost. You did? Showing your hand? Well, I mean, yeah, I just – I guess I guess the ladies will be a good fight, but that's man, what I the, that's high level. Those are ranked. Well, the other ones are ranked too. I think this is one sided. I think it's going to be. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we are tipping our hand. Who knows? Look, we have uh, the top of the hour break. It's not that long. We'll get get through it pretty quickly. But before we leave you, let me throw out some social media info. Our show on Twitter is at MMA Junkie Radio. Dan is at Dan Tom MMA. I'm at MMA Junkie George. Goes is at the Goes. Danny, our producer back east, he's at Danny Otto. On Instagram, I'm at MMA Junkie George. Goes is at the Goes. Dan, are you at Dan Tom MMA? The Correct same? Mundo. And then Danny Otto, what's your Instagram? Is it the same as your Twitter? It is. It's Danny Otto. There you have it. Also, Danny, what's the easiest link for people to check out? You had Stitch on the show, and it went great. So plug that real fast. You got five seconds. Quick link. Say it. Do it. Uh, I, I'll post it in the combat chat so that everybody can find it. Way to leave me hanging, Danny. That's All right, terrible. we'll be right back. <laughs> break.
Auto, uh, so let's finish up here. Where uh, where can people catch your show? What's the easiest uh, path? Uh, well, the easiest ca path is right now we broadcast through uh, another network called FNTSY. F so if you search FNTSY, okay. FNTSY. So if you search for them on YouTube, it'll bring you to their main page and check out the videos. And we have our own like sub playlist where you can find all of our episodes. Mm -hmm. But what I was telling you over the break is that we are in the process of having our personal one uh, where we're putting up all the videos so that I can it, hopefully in the future just direct everybody straight to our stuff. Only. I want to be a subscriber. I'm on YouTube right now. What do I do? I'll have to send you a link. We don't have, what I found out with YouTube is that you can't make a customized URL until you have X amount of subscribers. So I should go to FNTSY right now? Uh, you if that. you want to find that, but if you want to be a subscriber of just mine, let me find mine too. Yeah, I'm going to go through the steps here. And if you're following the show, check it out. Give Danny Otto some love. He had Stitch Duran on his show. Uh, they are big in, into uh, the comic books and those goddamn dolls. What are they called? Funko Pops. Pops. Yeah, Pops. Pop. Funko Pops. Funko Pops, uh, which I underestimated just how popular they are. Oh, Danny's ruined my timeline on Facebook. Yeah, I, I, and then there's uh, they, they, they all these talk about movies and music and pops and nonstop. <laughs> all right, so I'm on Fantasy Sports Network, and then what do I do? I'm on there. Then YouTube what you're page. gonna do? Okay, uh, you're gonna click. You can click either videos or playlists. I would go to playlists. Okay. The little tab, and then you'll see created playlists right there. Yep. Click that. And if you hit, if you click over twice. Uh, you'll see popping off. Popping off. There it videos. is. All right, I'm gonna become a subscriber right now. Well, you, Bitch, then you're you gonna got become 61, a subscriber. Bitch, you got sixty-one thousand. Yeah, that's, that's the FNTSY's network. Oh. I told you we're making, we're in the process of oh, making our own right now. I did what you said. Right I, went to, I went to popping off and. Yeah, because that's where most of them are. How right did now. you get fifteen subscribers? I want to be number sixteen. What does it take to do that? I'll I'll have to send you the link because we don't have a direct URL, so I can't send you like oh, we wow. do, but it's just a bunch of numbers and letters. Okay, do that then. I, I gotta send you we'll, a link. We'll do to our that. best to retweet or whatever. Dan, Tom, do you have a YouTube page? N yeah, but no, it's not active. Not active. All right. Something I'm, I'm working plug on. The, Been plug working the, for like uh, a year and a half. Plug, <laughs> plug what you got. You got your website. You got your um, uh, your uh, podcast. Yep. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about that. When we can expect the next. Uh, Audio drop. Shoot. Um, today's recording on Thursday, so I'm going to uh, record after the show today. Uh, UC Argentina breakdown. Uh, the Protect Your Neck podcast. You can find it on iTunes or on smartphone. Family players at MixedMartialAnalyst.com. Two things I'm majorly uh, behind on. George, G G George just mentioned i got to call myself out. YouTube channel is coming. So is Stitcher and all those other platforms. It's on this big fat to-do list that I keep next to my computer and can never get to. But... If you want to hear my breakdowns or top five uh, episodes from past or future of the Protect Your Neck podcast. Thanks, George. Give him uh, a review, too. Those reviews help us out a lot. Uh, his show, our show, you know, Mercedes and Jade, they, they just launched a show. And Richard and Frank and, all, you know, all the friends of the show, Adam Hunter, anybody that's ever been yeah, through. They, yeah. they, you know, they plugged us before. We plugged them. Uh, Ghost has a YouTube, Ju Ghost Jitsu, but you haven't uploaded anything in a while, right? No. Nah, you I don't said you were going to fire it up again or did you throw in the towel? I never really, uh, I just use that for, like, the show stuff, for junkie gathering stuff. I've never really done anything with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and weren't you going to revisit, though, Goose Jitsu, some clothing or apparel? Yeah, still working on it. Any still update? I have one design that I really like, but there's a couple that need to be tweaked. Okay. Um, so, yeah, on iTunes, those reviews, you can rate us one to five stars. And, look, we're all men here. Of course, we'd rather have five stars. It helps the algorithm, helps the placement within YouTube. But if you're going to give us four or less, just tell us, hey, tweak this, and I'll give you some love. Because you can go back and revisit those. Um, and uh, trust me, anytime somebody gets one star, they're like, oh, damn, you know, because you need some more. <laughs> man, you got to be stupid if you get one star, though. To like, fight let's those be off. Honest. Come on, man. I can watch any show on TV and at least give them two. I think so, too, man. 
Yeah, I'm with you. Nobody can be that bad. Yeah. All right, let's do the daily debate. I think we're ready for that. If you guys can think of anything else you'd like to plug, since we had some time, we can do it. But in the meantime, let's go to uh, today's question. Here we go, guys. Which remaining uh, Bellator MMA headliner will give MMA fans the best fight to close out 2018? 2018. Enjo versus Salter. Sakura versus Kapanen. Primus versus Chandler. McFarlane versus Laterno. Dan Tom. Uh, striker versus grappler matchups usually uh, don't make for the fight of the night award winners for the most part. It's usually one-way traffic either way. So I'm going to go uh, with the obvious choice here. I mean, Chandler versus Primus. I'm with you. Um, nothing against McFarlane versus Eterno. That's actually probably going to be a good fight now that I think about it. And I think that's maybe where Goes is headed, but we'll see. Uh, I saw them both in their last fights, and I remember being entertained by both of uh, those, those last fights too. So I guess I shouldn't really slam dunk it, but yeah, man, you know what? Chandler and Primus have been building this up for 18 months, and not in the way a fan like myself likes it. It's not like they went out there and got other wins to build up to it. Uh, they just basically have called each other out for, you know, I signed the contract, well, I'm waiting for you, you know, and vice versa. And then Chandler went through a free agency period, and, Actually, Chandler did take some fights, so I can't put too much blame on him. But Primus has had just the, the longest injury ever. I mean, I don't know what happened, but he's back. And uh, that's the one I'm looking forward to. I think it's going to be fireworks, especially if Chandler can even things up. We just know that we can probably see a, a part three. Goes. I am going to go Letourneau and McFarlane. I just think uh, the question is, which one will be the best fight? And I think that one will go back and forth. I, I think it'll be a really fun one. I like Primus and Chandler, but I have a feeling that one might be, it might end early. I think it might be one-sided. So I'm going to go with uh, Letourneau and McFarlane. However, if you were standing in between two auditoriums and the doors were closed mm -hmm. and both fights were starting at the same time and you couldn't see a replay of the other fight for at least a week, which door would you go through? Oh, Chandler Primus. Okay. All right. He kept yeah. it. He kept the real. Yeah. yeah All right. But if you're talking about the fight fight, which is going to be better, I think the girls are going to bring it that night. Gotcha. All right. Here's how the results came in. 400, almost 500 came in uh, for votes. It was a landslide, man. 82% said Primus and Chandler. Uh, second place was McFarlane and Letourneau at 10%. And then the others were 5 and 3% respectively. And Jokowani Salter, Sakura, and Kapanen. There you have it. There's today's Daily Debate brought to you by the at MMA Junkie Radio Team. Uh, let's see here. Carlos Silva will join us in about seven minutes or so, so we got some time. Um, I do want to say that next week we'll be here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We're off for Thanksgiving and the day after Thanksgiving. However, we will have some original uh, content for, if I'm not mistaken, Danny said Friday show. And uh, on Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday, yeah, that's right. Well, didn't you call one of them a Frankenstein show? Yeah. So that was I, not I original content, right? It's it's previously recorded content, I believe. Right. They call it a best of. I call it a Frankenstein show. Basically, we're gonna we're gonna take some of the the past, recent past stuff, and and put it together and make it sound good. There you go. But one of them is original content. We've been coming in here the last couple of days. Uh, and working on it, and it was really, really fun, guys, going down memory lane a little bit, just seeing what you guys were thinking uh, as these last 25 years have, have unfolded. Mm -hmm. We, You know, we probably could have done 50, honestly. There's just yeah. been a, well, there's been a ton I mean, of great moments. Yeah, yeah, you're right, I guess. Because uh, especially if we started tossing out more fights. You oh, know what fights I mean? you can go on forever, yeah. Right, I mean, like, a second ago I said, yeah, see, Maderos wants to return. Remember I, remember I said that? Mm -hmm. Lightweight. If I'm not mistaken, I think they fought in Detroit. It was Oliveira and Maderos. That was a fucking awesome fight. Is it really a 25 greatest moment? It'd be hard to make it in there, I would say. But really, as far as, like, when you sit down yeah. in your chair and you, got, you open that beer and you go, all right, I'm, wait, I'm ready for a good fight, those two – you can't get any more than what those two get. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yep. But they're, they're just not star power names that you gravitate to when you're making these lists. You start looking at Couture and Penn and GSP and McGregor and right. Ronda and all that. And then you realize, holy shit, I'm going to run out. But that's what I mean by 50 because if you want to go through – I mean, look at – I had to get to, like, the late 20s before I got to um, Hendo and, and Rahua. And I realized that we weren't ranking them, but that fight recently got inducted. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. You know, there's just a lot of, lot of fights over the years. 
If I'm not mistaken, I think the UFC did the numbers, and it was like 4,652 fights they've had oh, wow. since UFC won. That's counting uh, the fight nights and all that, or are they just doing pay I think it was – ooh, <laughs> you just stumped me. I think it was just UFC product. So, yeah, UFC when they were on versus, the fight Tough. nights. Yeah, it was all that, but as long as it was – UFC and brother, I don't think it includes WEC Strike Force. That was something else that they acquired, but I think just UFC fights, uh, four thousand. I know it was four thousand six hundred. I thought it was fifty-two. I tried my best to remember it. Hmm. Then they had. Did you guys see the poster of all of their champions? Yeah. Somebody yeah, put that out the, on one Twitter. One of the champions retweeted it or tweeted it out. Did you guys catch the mistake? No. No, Steve Jenham. <laughs> no. Um. They didn't do tournament champions. No Steve Jenham. So, yeah, no Steve Jenham. You guys want me to I'm spoil out. it? I'm out. That's all you got to say. Look, or do you want to look and find All you got to say is no Steve Jenham, and I'm out. Uh, <laughs> I guess for the, for the purpose of this show, we should probably yeah, say yeah, it. Yeah, By the way, yeah, yeah. Dan brought something up. Steve, he was the fireman, right? Or, or a cop? He's a UFC 3 winner. Uh, the first guy that won is an alternate. I well, I know that, but we was he a cop or a cop, fireman? Cop. cop. I was thinking, why have the firemen had so much success, and why have there been cops that have done it? I mean, what, there's what been a few cops. Was he a Sean fireman? Gannon took out Kimbo, didn't he? I don't know. He was Canadian, though, so a Mountie? I don't know. Mm. Um, I just know John Alessio is a cop and Ulysses Gomez are cops, but they're cops now, and so is Josh Haynes, but they're cops post-fight. Uh. But I, I was funny because when you think of firemen, there's been some good ones, dude. Lytle, Stipe, Eddie Wineland, <laughs> uh, my man Chad Griggs, I think was his name, was a mm-hmm. fireman. And, and so I was thinking, wow, I guess maybe they just had more of that free time. Although you tell a fireman then, they'll go, hey, man, we work two, uh, two 24-hour shifts, and we make up the – shut up. You're sleeping – and fucking playing cards most of the time. But for the most part, I, I, I thought of that. I was like, w- did I miss it or was there just not many cops? I mean, Crow Jer- Cop, but he he did that, I think, <laughs> post that career. Uh, Jermaine Durand. Like Jermaine Durand, I mean, yeah. Paulo Thiago, does that Sean count? Bope? Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. There Sean are Gannon. a few out there. Sean Thiago. Gannon. Who? Sean, Sean Gannon. Gannon. He fought two fights, right, in the UFC or one? Yeah, he had the epic fight against Kimbo outside of the UFC. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But all right, so let me dial it back, guys. Sorry. Um. So I would just say, just say it. Oh, the poster. Mm-hmm. All right, the poster didn't have tournament champions. And then somebody goes, where's Colby? It didn't look like they had interim champions e- either. But where I think they made a mistake was they did it by Rose. And I saw, clearly saw GSP next to Hughes and Woodley. But he was also included in the ones that had the two straps. So then I go, wait, is Cormier also in there and also in his two weight classes? And he wasn't. And neither was... Penn, it was just GSP. So I think, why was GSP only in his own row and then in the double champ row? And McGregor wasn't in the lightweight row either. I mean, I did it pretty quick, mm-hmm. but tell you what, let's take a break and we'll look for it, just so I can make okay. sure that I'm right, and that way you guys can take a look. Maybe you guys can have uh, editorialize over my dumbass, because we got to get Carlos Silva on anyway. So, you're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM, Rush 93. Stay close, and we'll be right back.
them. Like a lot, especially Goes. Here, gorgeous George and Goes. Get in the spirit of the holidays with SiriusXM's full lineup of holiday channels, 15 channels of commercial-free holiday music, including holiday traditions on Channel 3, Holiday on Channel 4, and new to this year, the stars of Hallmark Channel. They present their favorite holiday favorites on Hallmark Channel. That's Channel 70. Get our complete holiday lineup at SiriusXM.com slash holidays and bring the holiday cheer into your home on SiriusXM, connected devices, and speakers. Our next guest is the president of PFL. PFL 11 is headed your way, folks, on New Year's Eve, live from New York City, 7 p.m. Eastern start time. We get six title fights. Six times somebody's going to lift a big old check for $1 million. Also, Kayla Harrison back in action. What a great way to watch some fights and then go out, ring in the new year. Doesn't get any better than that. Joining us now on the hotline is Carlos Silva. Hey, Carlos. Welcome back, man. How you doing? Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. And yourself? Doing great, man. Doing great. All right. Excited. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the first thing I asked Greg Savage yesterday was, how's everything going? Uh, we had, No news is good news. Uh, everybody's healthy and and doing well in their camps. That's a great that, that's a great start. That is, you know, uh, Jay, you know, Ray checks in with all these guys. You know, being a fighter himself, he uh, he can kind of get a good read of the situation. Unlike all of us that are just civilians, and uh, he's checked in with everyone. Everyone seems to be on track, and uh, and I think they're you know just trying to make sure they stay healthy and. And, uh, you know, have a good solid camp. Don't make any mistakes because this is uh, obviously the biggest fight of all their lives on December 31st. I mean, biggest, biggest fight for any, for any, any MMA athlete that's happening here on December 31st with, with $6 million to, uh, to six champions. It's unbelievable. Unless my eyeball was hanging out of my eye socket, I'd be showing up too. But, yeah, I, I hope they have safe camps during the holidays. <laughs> they make their way and they go out there and perform. But you know what? You know what's easy? Uh, to promote about a fight card like this is those guys already went after it. You know what I mean? You guys created that playoff format, and they were already fighting for that million dollars back then or to at least be in the position to win a million dollars. That that made things very, very exciting. Yeah, look, you know, you're right. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, these guys, you know, won during the regular season. They got through a crazy two, fight twice, win twice, quarterfinals and semifinals. Uh, I mean, no, no other MMA on the, you know, athlete on the planet has done this. And now uh, these 12 athletes are going to go and, uh, and compete. So I win a million dollars, raise up the belt, uh, and, uh, and, you know, get a million dollars, and their lives will be changed. I mean, you know, how many, how many MMA fighters have fought for a million dollars in the whole history of the sport? And, you know, there's going to be six millionaires on New Year's Eve. And uh, I think it's amazing. It's great for the sport. I love uh, – I love what we're doing with the PFL. I love what we're doing with these athletes. And 200K for the runners-up. That's not shabby. No, that's right. Look, the, the runners-up, uh, look, all of it. We started with 72 fighters in the regular season. Now there's 12. And you're right. Those runners-up are going to get a nice uh, runners-up paycheck. And then the champions are going to get a great million-dollar paycheck. It's, uh, it's great for all these fighters. And uh, I think uh, you're going to see a lot of fighters that are going to say, uh, you know, to call their manager and say, hey, man, uh, get me into the PFL in 2019. You're going to see that happen. It's going to continue. I firmly believe you. And let me tell you, my favorite run out of all of them, and it's not because he's part of Sirius XM. It's just because of what, how, how deep he had to dig to get there. Like Vinny Magalhaes, for example, I mean, he just smoked everybody. But Sean O'Connell, I was there in Long Beach, man. This guy fought his ass off, and it was really cool to see him celebrate with his people. Um, it, I likened it to, like, you know, in the NFL, when you win the NFC championship and the AFC championship in the locker room, man, you're spraying champagne like you really did win it all. But you haven't because you still have to go in the Super Bowl. But it's a huge moment to even get that far. And that's what I saw Sean O'Connell go through. He had to dig deep. He was down in round one, came back with a 10-8, and then that firefight he had with Smilino Rama, that was something else. That was pretty cool. Did you have a pretty? Uh, did you have a particular favorite story to follow, uh, uh, Carlos? Look, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on the bandwagon there with you for a second, though. I mean, the Sean O'Connell fights, both of his regular season fights, unbelievable. Uh, you know, wins and losses. 
he comes back and he gets through this, you know, quarterfinals and semifinals. And you're right, he dug deep. And you got to give him all the credit in the world. He's now in the championship fight. And look, Vinny, Vinny's had exactly the opposite. You know, he really came through and just dominated. Uh, look, he's a, you know, he's a world champion already. And so, uh, Vinny looks to be in form. I think, I think that fight is, uh, is just one of, uh, every fight that's great. I mean, you know, Ray Cooper, oh, I think a star a is born with Ray Cooper. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the, the energy, the power and the speed that came out of Ray Cooper. I don't care who you are. Um, even a, even a wily veteran like Jake Shields who tried to find a way in the quarterfinals. And I know he had a deep strategy to try and get there. He couldn't contain uh, Ray's speed and power. And so, you know, look, it, the list goes on and on. Great story with Josh Copeland now in the finals. Again, he was sitting on his couch waiting to see if he was going to get in as the eighth seed. You know, it's like a Cinderella story. He, you know, the, the, the chips fell where they did, and he squeaks into the eighth seed. He gets the number one seed, and Barroso gets a win. And, uh, and now, you know, gets through Nicholson, and now he's in the finals uh, against Felipe mm-hmm. Linz. You know, another great story, the preacher from Denver. And, uh, you know, obviously going to be the biggest payday of Josh Copeland's life and his MMA career. And, you know, he's fought everywhere. He's fought in UFC. He's fought, he's fought everywhere. And uh, he's going to maybe become the PFL champion. Carlos Silva is our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio. We are talking about PFL 11, which goes down on New Year's Eve on NBC Sports, 7 p.m. Eastern start time, with pre- and post-fight coverage on their Facebook page. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash live. PFL is very prominent on fight day. All right, Carlos, I did want to ask you one last thing here. Um, Would you say that season one met your expectations or exceeded your expectations or far exceeded your expectations? Where, Where would you categorize season one up until this point? Uh, you know, I think it exceeded our expectations. And the reason I say it is because I think it exceeded the expectation of the fans. I mean, I think there was a healthy dose of, of skepticism going in. Look, it was uh, the first season of the Professional Fighters League, a regular season, a playoffs, a championship, scoring, fight twice, win twice. There's a lot of moving parts here. And fans waited to see. But the fighters, you know, 70% of the finishes in the regular season, you know, the fighters brought it. They knew they needed to get bonus points to get in. And then I think the quarterfinals and semifinals, everyone just said, oh, my God, this is the way MMA should be, should be run. People win, they advance. People win, they advance. People win, they become champions. And so I think uh, the fans have told us it exceeded their expectations, and that's, you know, that's why we're here is the is to create a great platform for the fans and a great platform for the fighters. So I think uh, I think so far in A, and I think the championships are just going to put it over the top. Folks, don't forget, too, if you're in that tri-state area or you just want to treat yourself to a nice New Year's Eve, uh, the tickets are still available, and 25 gets you in the door. The Hula Theater at Madison Square Garden, and then how about just walking up a few blocks to Times Square and spending New Year's Eve there? That right there sounds like a fun night out. Uh, All right, let's turn it over to your to uh, Dan Tom, our fight analyst. Dan, what do you have for Carlos Silva? Hey, Carlos, uh, I just want to second that what you said about over, uh, you know, overachieving and specifically because of the fans, you know, I've been seeing a lot of great fan responses and me, you know, from a media member to an MMA fan at the end of the day. Uh, let's just say when you were airing on nights where there were other MMA cards, my eyes consistently drew to the PFL screen because of the stakes you guys put on your tournament. So I definitely want to want to commend you guys uh, first off the bat. But uh, while I got you, Carlos, I did want to ask one one question um, as far as potential changes. I, I, I guess uh, one you know one of the more uh, critical marks. It, it, was one of the tournament was the first round deciding uh, the strength of a of a draw, if you will. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm not wording that correctly, but basically, you know, in the once we got to the playoffs, sure. how heavily weighed that first round was, uh, and you know, you see a bunch of ideas tossed around there, and this is going to happen whether you know Bellator, UFC, everybody's got their own two cents, of course. But uh, one of the things was mentioned in there is maybe you know ju- ju- judging for the strength of the fight uh, as far as Japanese style and incorporating that in the tournament structure. Were there any uh, maybe not even a about what I'm talking about, but were there any uh, any things that you saw in particular that you guys are seriously talking about as far as adjusting for uh, number n- number two t- uh, tournament next year or season? I yeah, say, look, sorry. we've already started. Uh, the, uh, the league the league has already started to look at the adjustments uh, that we'll make after the championship. I mean, again, 
Uh, year one, I think we did a great job in all the corner cases around injuries and, and the way that we help fighters uh, prepare for their next fight. Certainly, I think one of the more controversial ones has been the quarterfinals and how do you deal with a two-round fight and what do you do about the draw. So that is at the top of our list. I think we've already got a couple of, uh, of straw, you know, uh, straw ideas that we're going to look at and, and you know, come together as a team. Having said that, all the fighters were briefed. They all knew that you got to win that first round in case a draw happens. And by the way, if you want to avoid all that, get a finish. Because if you get a finish, you, you take it out of the judges' hands. But certainly, look, we're going to listen to the fans, we're going to listen to the fighters, and we're going to regroup, and we're going to look at all of those pieces. I think, uh, I think one of the things that we're already looking at as we look at our 2019 schedule is even finding a, a little more time in between each of the fights for the fighters. Uh, as you know, you know, we work very closely with the commissions, and when a fighter gets knocked out or injured, there's going to be some mandatory suspensions to protect the fighters, which we support. So we want to make sure that in between each of their fights, they have enough time, and we might be able to find another, another five to ten days in between each of those fights. Those are all things that we're looking at, but, but by and large, I think the rules and the regulations and all really held up well. I think uh, we heard that from our fighters. They're, uh, they're, they're obviously the most important piece of this is, uh, is keeping them healthy and also giving them the opportunity to compete in a season of MMA. Goes, what do you have for Carlos Silva? Carlos, we're very excited for the fighters that have the opportunity to win the million dollars, but I want to talk about the ones who don't, the ones that didn't make it. Of that group, are there any in particular that have just been blowing up your phone about season two and making sure that they're going to get on there and make that impact? Well, I think a, a, a number of them, sure. I mean, they've, uh, they've uh, you know, guys like Will Brooks and Andre Harrison, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Howard and others that all just, you know, sort of missed getting in. Either they, either they didn't make the final eight, um, or they, you know, lost in the quarters or lost in the semis. Look, Chris Wade, we know had a, a very tough decision with, uh, with Nathan. And so look, Chris is, Chris is excited, you know, loved his PFL experience. Look, does he want to be in the finals? Of course, everyone wants to be in the finals to fight for that championship, but he'll be back next year. And, and they're all, you know, they're all getting queued up. You'll see some of them at Madison Square Garden at the Hulu Theater with us, uh, cheering on the championship and uh, getting us prepared for 2019. You know, and along with Kayla Harrison, you know, who's going to be there getting her third bout of the of her young MMA career in, so she can get ready for the 2019 season too. So they'll all be there. Uh, it's all uh, it's all part of the PFL family, and they're all going to be cheering uh, for these six million dollar winners and uh, and. Yeah, we'll drive right into the 2019 season that's going to start in May. We've asked a lot of the fighters, what are you going to do with that big paycheck? Do you have any plans? The two guys that we haven't talked to is you and Ray. What is it? Do you guys have anything planned after the show? Just, I mean, there's got to be this big release of just stress, excitement. Is there a brandy, cigars? Have you guys planned that out at all? You know, we, we, we really have not. I can tell you that I will. I will try and get away a little bit with my family for a, a little time in January, like to see, uh, see the family. My kids will be uh, home from college, and we'll, we'll, go, we'll get away somewhere to have a little fun for a week. Uh, there's no doubt it'll be a big, uh, it's going to be a big celebration. We're really excited about what, as a team, we've all put together here. You know, when I say team, I mean all the fighters, all the staff, uh, you know, the venues, the commissions, everyone, we've all worked together together. You know, we've got a great investor base, too, that have helped us. And, and look, there's going to be the end of uh, changing the game here in, in MMA. And uh, I think the PFL first season when we, you know, crown those six champions and Ray gives them their uh, PFL World Championship belt, uh, it's going to be a great accomplishment that we put this, uh, this season of sport together. And it was so successful. Cannot wait, Carlos. And we're going to have a lot of fighters on. Hopefully, maybe you one more time on Fight Week uh, to promote this because you guys have done a great job. You deserve it. Uh, we really appreciate the time you always give us, including today. So thanks again for joining us here on MMA Junkie Radio. Great talking to you guys. Talk soon. All right, you too. We'll see you. All right, folks, that's Carlos Silva. You want to give him a follow? It's at Carlos Silva, just like his name. Let him know you heard him on the at MMA Junkie Radio show. Remember, NBC Sports on New Year's Eve, they're going to – Show six title fights, along with Kayla Harrison, 
Uh, and if you want to go to the event, 25 bucks gets you in the door. What a way to start off your New Year's Eve, taking in some fights and then spilling out into Times Square. All right. Uh, we're going to go straight into our next guest. He's ready to rock and roll. His name is James Vick. He just signed on to fight Paul Felder at UFC 233 on January 26th. And this event takes place in Anaheim, California. Joining us now on the hotline is James Vick. What's up, Vick? How you doing? What's up, man? I'm good. Awesome, man. Well, good to have you back on the show, as always. Give us an update on Little Man. Uh, how old is he now, and uh, what, what's he up to? Is he a terror just like his daddy probably was around this age, or, or is he a, a calm baby? Um, but he's a good baby. He really is. He's seven months, uh, a little over seven months old, and... Um, He's a good baby. He really mostly only, you know, cries when he's when his diaper's dirty or he's hungry. And besides that, he's good. Um, we're still uh, in the phase of sleep training him where he's, you know, he's got to learn how to get on a real sleepy cycle because he still wakes up. Uh, my girl breastfeeds, so he still wakes up every two and a half, three hours in the middle of the night. So, she, you know, she's not liking that. But we just got to train him how to sleep. Besides that, he's a good kid. Mm-hmm. Do you get any passes once your fight camp starts in regards to, eh, it's your turn, it's your turn, you know, to tend to the baby? No, actually, uh, my girl's really good about that. I, I really, it really hasn't affected me much having a kid, to be honest. Because, I mean, she, uh, you know, we're in a position where now we can, you know, it's, we've been blessed enough where she can afford to be a stay-at-home mom and everything, and she knows I, I have a lot going on. And um, she, uh, you know, it's not like I can get up in the middle of the night and breastfeed. So uh, she does all of that, and... Um, you know, I don't have to do as much, to be honest with you, so I'm, I'm kind of blessed there. I think you can milk anything with nipples, right? <laughs> I heard that in a movie once. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Uh, all right, Vic. Um, you get to fight in Anaheim, California to start the new year. But before we get to 2019, how would you encapsulate 2019? Don't be too hard on yourself, man. You're still one of the top fighters out there. But, but you know, was uh, did you feel like you grew even though it was a one-in-one one year? Were you disappointed? Uh, t tell us. Oh, very disappointed. Very disappointed. You know, almost depressed. You know, I'm. Uh, I mean, of course, my skill set grew. You know, my skill set grew. My technique got better. Um, uh, I mean, a lot. Of, I think a lot of people don't understand that that I don't have. You know, as far as experience level of a lot of these guys. You know, some of these guys have been fighting literally ten, fifteen tra uh, training you know, 10 or 15 years longer than I have, you know, I'm, I didn't start training boxing until I was 20 years old. I didn't start, um, uh, grappling until I was 22. I'm 31 now, but I also, um, you know, I worked a full-time job, even, even over half the time I've been in the UFC, I worked a full-time job. I've had four major surgeries. So a lot of time on the shelf as well. So, you know, I, you know, I'm still in the phase of growing my skill sets and progressing and, you know, I've, I've uh, you know, uh, every fight I feel like I evolve and I show new stuff. But, you know, I just, I mean, I got caught. You know, I got caught early in that fight. And, you know, I can't blame anybody but myself. But, it, it, it you know, the last fight definitely sucked for me. You know, the the beginning of the year was good. You know, I got a win. Um, it wasn't a super exciting fight. But I, I won it, uh, handed uh, it to me, a, you know, easily easily won decision. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I got a big opportunity and I freaking blew it, you know. And it, and it, it sucks. But I'm not, you know, I'm not um, any more, any less confident in myself and my skill set. Not any, not by any means at all. You know, I just feel like uh, it's going to be a long road back to getting a big fight like that because these guys already don't want to fight me anyway. You know, so um, yeah, I got caught. But honestly, besides you know showing, uh, besides getting caught with a few overhand uh, shots and in in the two losses I have. Um, you know, I've really showed no vulnerability, and you know, it's being six foot three. It's hard. It's hard to get these guys to fight me. So, you know, uh, you, you get opportunities like that. You have to capitalize, and, and I didn't. So that you know, that definitely sucks. But I mean, I made decent money this year. Um, you know, uh, had my kid. I mean, it was a good year. You know, besides you know that one one major setback. Right. All right. Uh, let's turn it over to the guys here. It goes. What do you have for James Vick? Uh, that's kind of along the lines of what I wanted to talk about. James was. What you what you do going forward from there, because if you look at the the performance, I don't feel like it was something where you need to come back and a lot of fighters will try and reinvent themselves after a loss. It felt more like of a, a tightening of the screws situation. Is, is that am I interpreting that correctly or not? I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of people can say, you know, uh, but you but you gotta understand something too. Is, is these guys don't want to fight me? I mean, think about this. Even if even if I would have won that fight, name one guy ranked above me that would agree to fight me. 
You know what I'm saying? There's really not one. You know, I mean, maybe Barboza. That's who I was kind of hoping maybe I could get, but he's he's already booked for the fight with Dan Hooker. So maybe you know maybe the winner of me and Felder can get the winner of that fight. Um, because you you see you see um, Gaethje now he's about to fight Pettis. I think I guarantee you if I would have won, Pettis wouldn't have fought me. You know what I'm saying? I, they, they, these guys still wouldn't have fought me even if I would have won. I still would have had to fight someone right below me. So, you know, um, but obviously it still sucks and it's depressing to lose like that. It's so humiliating. But, um, I mean, I basically, I, you know, I just got I, I to gotta get on another winning streak. And, I mean, I'm not delusional. It's, you know, it, this, some of this stuff ain't fair, but, you know, life ain't fair. So I got to, you know, I may have to go back and win three or four fights, whereas someone like Gaethje only has to win one fight after losing a couple when he gets a big opportunity. But that's just the way shit is, you know, and I blew my opportunity. So I got I to gotta live with that. But, um I mean, as far as me and, you know, uh, putting this, you know, tightening up some things, I mean, obviously I got caught with, I mean, people can say, you know, they, oh, they have a blueprint to be more. The blueprint to be any tall person is obvious. I mean, remember when, when Hasim Rockman knocked out Lennox Lewis, you know, it, uh, overhands and looping shots is what beats tall fighters. I mean, that's obvious. Either either they catch me or I catch them or they, I don't get caught with those shots. But, I mean, that's obvious in, in anybody because obviously I need to – Shouldn't have circled that close to the cage from a you know a, a tactical standpoint. I let my back get too close to the cage. I didn't have enough room to circle out, you know. And those are things that I that I that I've studied. You know, I've watched the fight multiple times, and um, I, and I am addressing. But I mean, it's it's obvious. I mean, if you're fighting a, a, a taller guy, you're gonna you're throw overhand and, and looping left hooks and, and looping shots. That's what beats tall fighters. Um, so it's not like I mean, it's either am I gonna adjust to that because they're gonna have that same game plan every fight regardless, you know. So. Um, it's either do I keep my hands up enough? Do I do I circle enough out of the way? Do I not get backed up on the cage? You know, those are things that I have to tighten up for sure. In regards to Paul Felder and his last fight, are there any things that when you when you go back and watch that fight, are there things that that maybe Mike Perry did that you feel like you can replicate? Um, no, not really. You know, because I don't really. I'm probably honestly, I'm probably going to watch that fight maybe maybe one or two more times to study it, but then I'm going to go back to watching the other fights I was watching before that because, I mean, he broke his arm in the first round, so that's not really um, uh, him breaking his arm in the first round, you know, and he still lost a, only a split decision. He, You know, he, that fight was very close. Um, uh, I feel like he, he when you, you have a serious injury like that, when you break your arm and you're uh, injury bad enough, you have to have surgery on it later on, you know, you're not you're not the same. So that, that all the, the tools and the stuff he was doing is not going to be what he would be doing against me if he if he was healthy and had two arms. So I feel like that's kind of a bad, you know, um, a bad fight to, to study, to work on a game plan, you know what I mean? But uh, I just think he, he, you know, he had an unfortunate event of breaking his arm and, and, and you know, and that's, that's what what happened in that fight, to be honest with you. Let me turn it over to our fight analyst, Dan Tom. Dan, what do you have for James Vick? You know, I, I was going to ask you as well about your your outlook on Felder as well, technically. But man, you, you, as per usual, you give awesome breakdowns, uh, especially when you're on this show, James. Um, so let me ask you about a different kind of perspective about Paul. M m not so much about Paul, but about about the weight class and when the UFC offered it to you. Now, obviously, you know, I, I'm sure you were, you, you, you know, you, you were down, but also ready to get back out there, right? Uh, and uh, after your last fight, but was there any of you contemplating welterweight out there? Or how serious were you contemplating welterweight? How much of it has to do with the matchup uh, for you to stay, or, or how much of it is more the goals that you have always repeated uh, to us here on the show about uh, wanting to be world champion? Um, for sure, it's always about the goal of being a world champion. Um, uh and I'm and at the end of the day, I'm still ranked with number ten or eleven. You know, I'm still ranked. Like I, would, I feel like I would be dumb to, to try to move up at this point. And I get we're both very big lightweights, and there's a lot of guys that are big lightweights. But I'm glad you you brought this up. Actually, this is something that I was actually going to do like a social media post on. Maybe um, you've seen recently Cerrone's going back down. Yancy Medeiros is dropping back down. What's happening is is it, we need another weight class. Obviously, hopefully we can get a 165 pound division. You know, in a perfect world, that happens. If not, we're kind of stuck in the middle because you can say, oh, well, you're 190 pounds fighting at lightweight. Well, so is Kevin Lee. So so was Michael Chiesa. So, so is uh, Paul Felder. So is uh, probably a good portion of the top 20 guys are, you know, big like that. Outside, Eddie Alvarez was super big like that. You know, he gained a lot of weight in between. So, um, but what you're finding out is that when you move up, these other guys are still bigger. You know, yeah, I may be taller than these guys, but my, my bone structure is not bigger. I'm not, my frame isn't bigger, you know. Um, uh, so, like, you're in Yancey Medeiros is finding that. Cerrone and them are finding that, you know, and they're dropping, you know, that's why they say they're dropping back down. You know, why did they move up? Because they felt like um, 
you know, basically they had to because the late stri- was a struggle, and I get it. I, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. You know, I've never – but I've, here's the thing is I've never – it's funny because George Lockhart called me out on the Joe Rogan podcast uh, a while back uh, – about me being the hardest weight cut because, you know, he said I'm a sweet tooth and I'm, you know, I eat a lot of sugar and stuff. So I've never really, the thing is, is I've never really followed George Lockhart's program the way I should, and I've still never missed weights. So um, if I fall at the right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to really discipline myself. And, I, and I've and i been in the process of, I've been cutting out all sugar. I went through, you know, recently I didn't eat sugar for three weeks. And, you know, I'm kind of eating a little bit now, but I'm I'm about to go to Thailand on Monday and I'm going I'm to cut it all off again. And I'm going to see how much weight I can lose fast. Just, I mean, it, really a lot of mine is just diet, you know, bad diet. But um, just moving up, you know, if I follow George Lockhart's program the way I'm supposed to and then I, it's still really, really hard to make the weight, then, then I'll consider moving up for sure. But, I mean, right now I'm still, you know, ranked number 11 in the world. I feel like that would be a dumb, a dumb career move for me to do that. And then I have to turn around and, and, and win a bunch more fights to even get ranked in the next division, you know. And some of these guys are cutting from, you know, Two two oh five and two ten and stuff. These these welterweights, you know. So it's it's not like they're not cutting a lot of weight, also, you know. So I think, you know, like I said, Cerrone and Madison, they're finding out they're they're not the uh, that they're, they're still the smaller guy, even though they're tall going up, you know. And that's why they're I think they're dropping back down now, you know. I like that you're talking about it because the minute we stop, and then the minute it'll we'll lose a couple years of traction. I really believe, guys, that sixty five and seventy five are on their way. But then again, I've, I've said that a little bit. But I don't know. I feel like it picked up some steam. Uh, some of the names that James just dropped, they, they've been vocal as well. Uh, it, 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 it needs to happen, and I think it will happen. But I'm glad we're still talking about it, and I'm glad James gave a, a great explanation about it. Uh, James, one thing I was going to ask you was if you felt like you lost a little bit of your confidence and swagger. But just in hearing your voice, you really still sound confident. You've already addressed the loss. Hell, you were open enough to say that it was humiliating. But it sounds like you've really picked yourself up and you're ready to get on another streak. So I want to commend you for that. Thank you, man. And yeah, yeah, you know, I've never, I, I've never lost confidence in myself, and I never will. I mean, literally, these guys. I mean, realistically, these guys that I've beaten and that I'm fighting, I shouldn't be beating. These guys have literally been training for ten years longer than I have. I mean, Gaethje had been wrestling since he was five years old. I didn't even start training until I was freaking 20 years old in boxing, and then I didn't even start grappling until I was 22. You know, and, I mean, the dude literally has, if you do count grappling in his college wrestling and everything, he has 17 more years of mat time than I do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, granted, it was a striking fight, but still, um, when you when you have that type of years of grappling, you don't have to focus on that as much. You can grapple once or twice a week and just strike the rest of the time, you know. And, you know, realistically, should I beat Paul Felder? In my mind, I mean, of course I'm going to in my mind. I'm going to win. But, I mean, the guy's been training for 10 years longer than I have. You know what I'm saying? I mean, realistically, I shouldn't beat these guys. So why would I, why would I not be confident, you know, knowing that, that I've, I've, I've been able to work hard and I've been able to catch these guys just through, you know, uh, hard work, um, uh, you know, good coaching, and then me, me, I'm really having no life in my whole 20s. My whole 20s, I haven't had a life, and I've just been training, and I had to catch up to dudes who've been boxing, wrestling, or taekwondo, or whatever, since they were a kid, and and now here I am, you know, I'm fighting these guys. Yeah, you're uh, you're doing well too, man. That's a tough division, you know, and you're 13 and two overall. You've had a four fight win streak. You've had a nine fight win streak. So uh, nothing to hang your head on at all. Um, all right, let's close with this. Uh, Vix picks for UFC Fight Night 140 in Argentina. You got something for us? You got a parlay you can feed me, man? You know me. I'm right here at the Mandalay Bay. All I got to do is walk up a few steps, and I could put in a legal wager. Man, this, and, of course, this, we have a, a worldwide audience a that, can, that can just press a button or two. But do you like anyone? This is a tough card. Um, you know, uh, Magni is a big underdog. Um, but but I, would, I would take a risk. With those odds that I've seen, has the, how, how far is the lines run? What's the, what's the odds right now? We don't have him in front of him. Oh, I'll pull it'll just take. Oh, you got it. I'll pull it up right okay. now for you. Yeah, I know that Santiago was about a minus three hundred or high in the two hundreds, right? Minus two ninety right now, at least yeah. at five dimes. Uh, plus two forty five is your comeback on Neil Magny. Yeah. I would take that bet. I mean, I would take it. I'm not saying I would take it for a huge amount, but I mean that. I mean, Neil Magny has beaten some good people, and, he, and he's been around, and he's he's another one, almost almost like I am, who started training way later in life than everyone else. You know, that a lot of these guys have, and he didn't have the experience level. But he's catching up, and he's, you know, obviously you're going to run into people. I mean, you know, he fought someone, you know, uh, I guess a couple years ago, like Damian Maya. You know, I mean, the dude's been grappling for 15 years longer than him. Of course, he's probably going to be able to submit him if they hit the mat, you know. 
But I think, you know, that he's a good enough dog to take a chance, you know, for at least a, a decent, you know, a small wager, nothing huge, but a decent wager, that, you know, because that, those odds are too good for that, you know. Any other fights? For you sure. know me, I'm a parlay guy. Can you give me one more? What's the, what's the co-main again? Darren Elkins and Ricardo Lamas. Lamas is your yeah, favorite, yeah, minus 210. Lamas, Lamas is a big favorite, right? Yeah. Yep. I mean, as tough as Darren Elkins is and some of the comebacks he's had, I wouldn't bet against Lamas. Okay. You know, I wouldn't do that. Um, who else we got? Uh, we'll do one more. Uh, Pauliana Botelio versus Cynthia Calvillo. Do you do well with the – with the ladies, uh, I, I'm talking about betting. Obviously. Yeah, Cynthia's a huge favorite, though, right? She's a huge favorite? Or no? Uh, that Which one's one? pick them, right? Botelio uh, Calvillo? You know, Calvillo's the more name value, and she's uh, ironically the underdog to Pollyanna Botello, who's a, a Nova Nyao, uh, a female, uh, a weight class or two under that Caitlin Vieira. But but she looks really impressive, too. I think I think it's more of a Styles fight, but I was a little bit surprised to see uh, Calvillo as a dog. Um, I ended up picking the other girl for what it's worth, but it's a close fight. You know, Calvillo's, uh, she's really, you know what I, I noticed about her that I think that um, she, she's, I think she's really, she's mentally or more, more mentally strong than a lot of those girls in her weight class. She, I mean, she's a dog. She's a freaking warrior. So I think that unless, you know, is this, this other girl I'm assuming from Nori Danielle is a very good jiu-jitsu grappler or something, probably like a black belt or something. Uh yeah yeah she, 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 she apparently her strengths in ra in wrestling and she's really she's real physical she's 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 got, she's got good takedown defense uh yeah. her credits are in Brazilian wrestling which I don't to be honest James I don't know much about that scene uh, you don't see that accolade too much but but she's got it next to her name for what that's worth she looks like she can defend a takedown uh, which she'll probably need to do against Calvillo for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. All right. I mean, Cynthia, Cynthia is, is, I don't know the other girl, so I would have to pick Cynthia just because mm -hmm. she's, she, you know, she's mentally strong as it comes in for the women's division. James, we got to end with this real quick. It was almost a year ago we got to go to uh, JBLE together. Can you believe t how time flies? And I'm not sure we've even seen you since then. I know we've spoken to you, uh, though, but uh, ho hopefully we can get you on a future trip. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was a good time, man. I, uh, I still get a text from some of the guys there and everything, you know, talking about fights and just checking on me, saying what's up. Um, uh, that was a, that was a great experience, and I was very uh, blessed to be on that. Y'all allowed me to come on that trip, so I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll you know come back anytime y'all want. All right, brother. Well, first things first, have a safe camp versus uh, or you know leading up to Paul Felder, and uh, cannot wait to see you guys throw down. Uh, both are solid lightweights, so this is going to be a good one. And it's going to happen in Anaheim, California, and I'm pretty sure we'll all be there. So, anyway, uh, happy holidays as well. Safe trip to Thailand, and, and we'll catch up soon. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right. We'll see you. Folks, we're going to take our last break. It's MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation, Channel 93.
They taught Andy Griffith how to whistle. Here are Gorgeous George and Goes. Help SiriusXM in the fight to end hunger. Support Why Hunger's annual Hungerthon donation drive. Go to SiriusXM.com slash Hungerthon and see items you can bin, bid on now. Like uh, spending a day at an NFL training camp with SiriusXM NFL Radio or make a donation and receive a gift like a Tom Morello Hunger is a Crime hat or a John Lennon Imagine There's No Hunger hat, a Bruce Springsteen Land of Hope and Dreams pin and more. All right, let's uh, finish up with a quick call from Showtime. What's up, Showtime? It's going to be quick, but it is your time. Hey, what's going on, fellas? Hey, I'm going to make this quick. I was trying to get in yesterday, man, when you guys were talking about the, the, the Chandler Primus fight, man. I know this ain't gonna, this won't be a popular opinion, man, but that's gonna be a hell of a fight for Chandler, man. He he wasn't he didn't really show me shit in that fight. He wasn't <laughs> winning the fight before he got hurt, so I think that's gonna be a tough fight. Uh, Goes you know, and can't I reply. You I think you're on the other side, right? Yeah, man. I I, I think it's gonna be uh, I think it's gonna be a quick night for Chandler. Chipotle. How's it gonna be a quick fight? Chandler wasn't winning the last fight, Goes. Oh, you heard this, him. This, he this, hurt this, him with this, one this, leg. Uh, Chandler, he wasn't winning the last fight. He was getting beat in that Ooh, last fight. I smell a bet coming on, guys. This so, is why. This is why I said the word Chipotle. I'll tell you what. You guys save it for tomorrow. I want to have. A, I want to have a debate. We do have a Chipotle bet. It's official. Yeah. But tomorrow we're gonna call you Showtime, and uh, you're gonna be part of the show in that regard. And you and Ghost can debate this one because I, I want to hear both angles, and that'll give us all a chance to go back and watch the fight since it should be pretty accessible. Uh, thanks for calling in, man. Thanks for your support as always, Showtime. Uh, we got to go. Thank you to uh, all of our guests today, and that includes Carlos Silva, James Vick, and Lewis Smolka. All right, folks, we are out of here. We'll see you all tomorrow with another edition of MMA Junkie Radio. For Danny and Dan and Goes, I'm George. Have a nice day. Go out there and be a champion. And tonight, go Peru.